Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and I know it's been like two months, but I've decided to start uploading again. Sorry for my very random and long breaks, just wasn't very motivated, but we're back, and we're gonna try and stay consistent for at least a year, and maybe disappear again. <laughs> Anyways, in this video, we're going to be making like background music or looping background music, Basically, like this is good for like simulators or really any game that you don't want it to just be silent in the background. So, first thing you want is obviously your songs. I already have a folder with six songs in it, but if you want to get some songs, I recommend like if you want like let's say simulator background music, you click on the toolbox under the home tab. It'll be right next to part, and then click on this little drop down and click on audio, and then most of the songs are like. Or the best songs for simulators are like under the Roblox song. So if you just search up any song by Roblox and click on the title creator and then or under creator, click on Roblox and then it should say by Roblox and then just like click through these and just like play them. This will play, yeah. It's just some chill thing. And then if you like the song, you just hit insert and in your songs folder, make sure you name each one of the songs to a number. So like one, two, three, four, five, six. This one would be seven. So let's say I want to add this. I can either hit F2 on my keyboard or I can right click it and hit rename. And then I can just name this seven. So now I have seven songs inside of my songs folder. And we're going to make this local. So the songs are only going to play for that one player or they're going to play for everyone just like they're not going to be synced. Not everyone's going to be hearing the same song at the same time, but they're still going to be background music. So what we're going to do in Starter GUI, we're going to hit the little plus on the side and we're going to insert a local script. Now remember, always rename your scripts. Don't leave it as the default name. So let's just name this background music just so it's a little bit more organized and then it makes it a lot more obvious that this script is for background music so we can quickly find it. So let's remove our default hello world and just select all of it and get rid of it. And now let's make our first variable. So the first thing that we want to do is get our songs folder. So what we're gonna do local songs equals script.parent wait for child songs. So we're making a new variable, it's gonna be called songs, and we're getting the scripts parent, which is basically what the script is inside of. So this is the script when we type in script. It's just this in the explorer tab and then the parent is whatever the script is inside of. So as you can see, if we close starter GUI, the script goes away because that's what it's inside of. So the script's parent would be starter GUI. And then inside of starter GUI, we wait for something named songs to exist. The reason why we use wait for child is because songs might not be there at the same time as the script. So the script might load in before songs loads in. So we want to wait for songs to be loaded in and then we're going to assign that to this variable we just want to make sure that it's there because if we just use let's say find first child or we just do script.parent.songs this might error because songs doesn't load in in time so just to make sure that there's an error we're going to do wait for child and we're going to do songs so now whenever we type songs in our code it's just like we're typing all of this out here this is the same thing as this it's just basically abbreviated it's like abbreviations like lol equals laughing out loud it's pretty much the same thing if you type in songs it'll put whatever it's abbreviated for so now we're going to spawn in a function since we're going to make a loop and when you're making loops you usually don't want it to yield your code and what i mean by yield is let's say i have a wall true loop like this and then after this, I want it to do print hello world. It won't make it to this print hello world because it's constantly looping here. Like it's gonna keep, it's gonna finish what's in here and then repeat, finish what's in here and repeat. So it'll never move on to this line of code. So we, we're gonna spawn in a function which will spawn in the loop so it's in the background. So it won't prevent any extra code that we write in here from well, not working. So we're going to do task.spawn. Task.spawn function 
and now whatever we put in here is going to be spawned into the background so this code is just going to be running in the background and won't interfere with anything that we write over here so now we want to actually create our loop i'm going to do while task await 0.5 do and then once we hit enter it should input an end and now the reason why I'm doing 0.5 is because I don't want the next song to instantly start playing. You can remove the 0.5, just make sure you have a task that wait. But I'm doing that just so it doesn't instantly start and it takes a second. So now we want to check if a song is already playing because we don't want songs to overlap. We don't want one song to be playing and another one to be playing because that's, that's not going to be very pleasant to our ears. So we're going to make a variable in here. It's going to be called local is underscore playing equals false. Now remember, you can name your variables anything you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like it is in the video. I just tend to write my variables out like this. So you can just do like is playing or is play or anything like that. It doesn't have to be the same. Just mess around with it however you like, however you like to look at, I guess. So this is going to be setting is playing to false. And now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through our songs folder. So what we're just going to do for underscore song in pairs. We're going to do songs and then get children do. So basically this is going to loop through since we're getting the children of the songs with songs folder, which all of the children are pretty much anything that's inside of the songs folder. So like I said before, background music is a child of starter GUI so script up parent is starter GUI it's like I guess a family tree that's how the Explorer is set out this is a child of this so this is like the second generation and then the third generation something like that so that's the parent of the song and that's the parent of the songs folder so we're gonna get the children of the songs folder which is all of our songs and we're going to loop through it and when we're looping through it First, it's going to go and select song number one, and that's going to be assigned to a song variable. So this is pretty much the instance. So number one is going to be song. And then once we're done doing code for number one, it's going to repeat this and it's going to move on and select song number two. So then the song variable is going to be on number two, if that makes sense. And all we want to do is check if the song is playing. So if song dot playing equals equals true then if we select on one of our audios over here and we go into our properties tab you can scroll down and you can see this playing property so basically we're checking if song.playing which is this is true because that means the song is currently playing so there is a current song that is being played and if it is true we want to set is playing to true so if song if any of these songs are playing this variable would be, would be true else we're not going to do anything since by default it's false. We don't want to change it or anything. So now that we've done this loop to check if any song is playing, we can go out of this. And there are two ends here. If you just make sure you space it out correctly. And now we want to check if is playing is true or false. And make sure you do equals equals. For anybody wondering, since I get this question asked quite a bit, if I type anything like this or like this or something like this, this right here i'm just going to type them out here it's basically a combination of this or a greater than symbol and then an equal symbol and the same with the rest of them these are, this is just spaced out my um roblox studio font just automatically like puts them together so if you ever wonder what this little symbol is it's just a combination of greater than and equal to or less than or equal to or just equal to or equal equals so just in case you don't know what these symbols are or how to type these out, it's just two equals right next to each other. It just does that. So what we're going to do is if is playing equals equals false, then so we're going to be checking if this is playing variable is false, because if it's true, we don't want to play a new song. We just want to keep playing this song. So now we're going to get a random one of these songs because you don't want it to just be the same song over and over again in the same order because then it's just a little bit boring. You can do that, but let's just spice it up a little bit. So we're going to make a variable in here to get a random number. Since we named all of these numbers, we're going to do local random underscore number equals math.random 
and then the lowest one we have is one so this is the minimum and then the maximum we're gonna do a number or hashtag songs get children so basically we're making a variable called random number and we're going to use math and we're going to use math.random which basically math.random you can input a minimum number and a maximum number and it'll pick a random number between those so first parameter is the minimum and then this one is the maximum so let's say this is well seven it's going to pick a random number between one and seven and so what we're doing here is this hashtag so as i said before songs get children is getting all of the contents of our songs folder and then this hashtag means we're getting the number of children so we're doing the number of songs get children so it's just going to count how many children are inside of our songs folder which would outcome to seven so it's going to be one as the minimum number and seven as the greatest number and it's going to pick a random number in between that and then we're going to actually get our song so local song equals songs wait for child and we're just going to do two string random number or if i can put that there so basically what we're doing here is we're making a new variable called songs we're going into our songs folder right here and we're going to wait for a child and the reason why we're doing two string is because the name of um properties or the name of anything in our explorer tab is a string or a text value so this is a string and then this is a number value so if i were to put one here this is a string value this is a number value when we're getting a random number we're getting a number value but all of these the names are string values so we're converting this number into a string so we're turning number one into number one so we can actually properly get one of these songs in our songs folder and then we're passing random number because well that's what we want to convert into a text so we're turning whatever this random number is into a text and we're going to wait for a child of this name or of this random number and then once we get that we simply just want to do song play this is going to start playing our song because well that's what we want we want our song to play in the background and now we want to actually before we're almost done but we want to wait until that song is over before we repeat this entire process again obviously we can leave it here because we are checking if any song is already playing but we just want to add this delay so it's not looping so much so let's do song or let's do task dot wait song dot time length basically what this is doing here is if we click on one of our songs and we go into the properties you can see this property called time length this is basically how long the song lasts or how long like you can listen to the song for or the duration of the song so we're going to do task.wait which is going to wait this amount of time before moving on to the next line of code so for example if we pick number two it's going to wait 126 seconds before it moves on to the next line of code and well once it moves on to the next line of code it's going to understand that we are meant to repeat and so it's going to go down here down here and then back to the start and do all this code again to play a new random song so we have an infinite loop in our background so this is our background music script so we can go ahead and close this and we can minimize our songs folder over here and i'm just going to increase my desktop audio just so you can hear in the background music and let's hit play i'm pretty sure none of this is copyright but whatever we will see so we're just going to let this load and as you can see, you can hear some background music. We have some very chill background music. And I would wait until this song is over, but I don't know which one this is. Uh, I could check. Let's just see here. Okay, well, I'm not checking. But once this song is over, it should play the next song and it should infinitely loop. So there's always going to be some sound in your game and it won't be completely silent. So. That's how you can create some background music for your game. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps. I am going to try to start uploading again. I've s slowly been gaining more motivation to upload and I've become better at developing. So I'll be able to do more ideas. So comment below any ideas you want. And yeah, 
have a good day. See ya.